I think we're looking pretty good over here, folks. Uh, equipment for the day. Oh, this our broccolini. In oh room. yeah, that broccolini. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to broccolini in an hour's time. Uh, first up, what you guys need equipment-wise today? You do need your heavyweight. You need your two medium weights. You do need a pillow today. And then of course you need a towel as well so we can get that into what we're doing warm up wise and stretch wise at the back end of things. Today's a total mix between legs, core, uh, some back, some chest movement. So shoulders, we'll, we'll kind of mix it all throughout. We do got Bulgarian split squats today. I think that's enough of me chit chatting. Oh, music. We got a, a favorite band of mine. If you guys are into uh, New York punk rock, they're called Japan Droids. A big shout out to the Japan, Japan Droids. You want to look them up and put it on as a good tunage behind this please by all means let's get warming up you got a towel you got a good amount of space between your hands and you got a kind of tall stance we're gonna bring the arms all the way back and all the way forward that's it so big reaches if you can't get all the way back no worries also give yourself a little bit more space between the hands usually can help you get a little further then we're doing windmills so we're gonna go up and around one side behind us and back in front. Go about three times in one direction around the body. And then we'll switch from there and just reverse it. So again, knees are a little bent. Wanna feel those feet touching the floor, wake them up, think about them. Then from here, we're gonna bring our hands a little closer again on that towel. We're gonna bring the hands overhead. We're gonna do a few squats from here. Feet are shoulder width apart. And let's knock out a squat. Stand tall. Doing a little pull of the hands outward against that towel. Wake up more shoulders. Wake up that upper body. If you feel good with your depth, add to it. See if you can increase some of the stretching through the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Let's do one more last one. Okay, and then we've got our feet together and the last up with the arms staying overhead, do a big split stance going back. We do a twist to the forward leg side, come back up tall and switch. All right, push through that heel. And like I said, big step going back is gonna help you not only balance wise, but even stretching wise. We're gonna open that front hip, which tends to stay pretty contracted during a day of city. One more, last one. All right, so let's take the towel, we'll put it, put it down to the floor. We're gonna do one minute of some two, two, twos right here. So let's grab our two moderate size weights. We're gonna start on the floor. We're gonna start in that plank position. And we've got our feet wider for that plank position. Less than 10 seconds, we'll get started. Now you can also be on the knees. You got two of these followed by two deadlifts in three, in two, Lift the elbow by the ribs, switch, step up, shoulders down, belly tight, bring it up, then bring, then bring those weights up, two shoulder presses, and finish with those squats. As we're in our first round, just keep things smooth. We call this a little extension into your warm-up. Step into it, belly tight, back flat. Shoulder presses. Two good squats. We've got ourselves about 20 seconds left in here. Continue working through it, a still body through those plank positions. A tight core with whatever you're doing. Last 10 seconds. All right. We go finish up with these in three, in two, in one, let's put those weights down properly, bending the knees, keeping the back straight. Take that first high five. You folks are officially warm. So from here, Jackson and I got some mobility to Tabata. We're gonna start standing today and we're gonna have our feet real wide. And we're gonna work in to a lateral lunge, seated to one side only, sitting back with the hips. And then we're gonna open our arms kind of behind us. Then we come back up and clasp the hands together. Same side, we sit to it. We open up and then we bring it up. Second time around, we switch to that second side and create that opening along the way. Now our second movement, we're gonna bring it down to the floor from here. And with this movement, we're gonna be seated, our feet a little bit wide, and we're gonna have both of our knees turn to one side, stay to the floor, 
push up with the hips and reach that arm overhead, and then come back down and turn back to center. Same side, twist, knees stay down, hips push up, and we do that nice reach overhead. We'll do that on each of the sides for that 30 seconds. After that, we're gonna grab a single weight and we're gonna get into a half rolling bicycle and we're gonna work into our top leg as we turn, extending. So as I turn to one side, that arm's gonna reach up with the weight and that top leg extends. Then we come back to center. And once again, same side, top leg extends, reach that weight up, and then to follow, we hit both those sides, or hit that second side for that second 30. Last up, we're gonna get into a bear crawl position. So we want our hands underneath our shoulders, our knees to be just barely above the floor, and we're gonna to twist to one side, and then come back down and tap the knees to the floor. So lifting up, twisting, to maybe no more than about 90 degrees to that side. We don't need to lift the knees really high through here. And resting, unless you feel like you want to get more out of that, and then you can keep those knees off the floor continually, get that better challenge. We'll do that on both of the sides. We'll call that our mobility Tabata. Hopefully that's clear. We're standing up as our start point. We'll get started in 10 seconds. So big wide stance with the feet. We're gonna to sit to one side only, and we're gonna open the arms at the bottom. In three, in two, we're gonna hinge back, and then we're gonna open the arms. Awesome. So with our upper body, let's make sure that as we hinge back here, that upper body is turning to go to the center of those two feet, right? We tilt in a little bit, and we hinge forward a little bit. Okay, and that heel on the bent knee side is where we wanna feel the body's weight as we go down, as well as when we come back up. Three, two, and one. So we just shake it out for a moment. We get ready for our second side. Same thing coming up here. Starting in three, in two, sit back and down, open the hands, and come on up. Control the down, squeeze your shoulders. Come on up. So you push up your breathing out. That broccolini is making things extra toasty in here already, <laughs> here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, after this, we're gonna go to sitting down on our butt and having those turns in three, in two, in one. Oh, the sweat lodge is gonna be overtime today, oh. man. All right, we got our feet wide, we got our knees bent. We're gonna turn to one side, push the hips up in three, in two, in one. Knees to the floor, hips push up, and top arm reaches overhead. Same side, same thing. Knees to the floor, hips push up. Bring it on back. Let's see if that top arm can really reach overhead. Open that stretch through a big reach. Last few. Let's go three, two, and one. Same positioning, second side coming up. Work on knees staying to the floor and drive that hip press upward. Three, two, knees down, hips up, and reach it. All right, when that reach happens, breathe out. About 10 seconds. After this, we're gonna be grabbing that single weight. We're gonna be doing that bicycle turn with that shoulder press. Three, two, one. Grab a single moderate weight or a single heavy weight. I want your left hand holding it. You're gonna to turn to your right side. Three, two, turn. Left leg straightens, top leg straightens. Come back to where you start. Okay, turn, top leg straightening, top arm straightening. Control is the name of the game here. We want to feel that turn, but really kind of controlling every ounce of it. Yeah, finished in three, in two, in one. Switch those hands. Same positioning, we got feet up, we got hands in front of shoulders. Twisting to the left, extending the right leg and arm. Two, one, twist, come back to center. Control that twist, 
Top leg, top arm straighten. Ten seconds. After this, we're going bear crawls. Three, two, and one. All right, let's turn towards the floor. We're on hands and knees. Twisting to one side only. Half a turn. Three, two, half a turn. Come back down. You can tap the knees or you can keep them lifted. Work a little harder by keeping them lifted. Now, with this, this is a great time to remember that we want lats engaged right here. Turn on those lats. Squeeze them and feel them as a major part of that hold up top. Smooth turning up. Smir smooth return and down. Three, two, and a rest for a moment. Maybe come up onto the knees, shake the arms out for a quick moment. Open the hands. Second side, then we'll take a tiny breather. Three, two, let's begin. Next side twisting. Doesn't need to be a huge twist at all, right? Medium size within that twist and control coming down. Control coming down each and every time. Our lat check mentally. Are we using our lats? Physically, are they holding us in place? Last 10. Three, two, and rest. Everybody, small breather, mobilized, and hopefully ready to ride. Quick sip of water if you need it. Round two is going to come up here quickly. Round two starts with a wide stance, standing up nice and tall. I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to roll. Take our feet nice and wide. Let's bring our hands together. We sit back and down to one side. Pull the arms apart in two, in one. Hinge it back. Open the arms. And come up tall to the center. Hinge it back. Open the arms. Tall to center. Add depth if you feel good with it. Last few, we'll go three, two, and one. Leave the feet, stand up tall, shake your shoulders out. Second side's coming up. Same thing, let's set, hinging to the next. In two, in one, let's go, open, and tall, right? Every time you come back up from this, all the way upright, kind of looking out in front. Got about 10 seconds, and then we're gonna take a seat from here, and we'll do those little knee twists with the hip presses. Finished in three, in two, in one. Let's bring it on down. Let's have our feet out in front of us. Our knees are going to be bent. We do want like a good 90 degree in them. One side only. Two, one. Knees stay in touch with the floor. Hips push up and arm raises overhead. Same side, same thing. Right, so imagine that Jackson does a great job of this, showing you some big arch, right? The more he can push his hips up and push them out, the more we're stretching and opening that side body, a typically tight part of the body for most people. Let's go finished up in three, in two, in one. Simply switching to our second side here. Same thing, emphasis on a hip press for a bigger stretch. Three, two, let's rotate, knees to the floor, hips driving up high. That's it. Now, if that bend becomes a little too much, all you do is just make it less, right? You can figure out where your bend's gonna work best for your body, but practice some of these bendings, opening up some tighter parts of the body. We'll go finished up in three, in two, in one. From here, grab that single weight on your back. We've got that bicycle twist. Your top leg will straighten, as will your top arm. Two. One, turn to that side, 
and bring it all back. Hands in front of shoulders. At the top, low back press. There we go. Can you feel your core muscles turning you? Can you feel them balancing you coming back slowly? Let's go three, two, one. Let's change the hands with that weight. Second side coming up. Top leg, top arm straightening. Beginning in three, in two. Let's turn to that second side and smooth coming back. Eyes stay on that weight. That weight stays stacked on that shoulder. 10 seconds. After this, we go bear crawls. Three, two, and one. All right, let's flip it around. Let's get into that bear crawl position. Hands under shoulders. Twist into one side. In two, in one. Small twist, small return. Work control. You could rest on each one of those. You could tap the knees and do that rest. Or you could stay lifted and bring up that challenge level a little higher. Got ourselves about 10 seconds here. Biggest thing is smooth. Three, two, and one. Rest for a moment. Maybe shake those arms out for a quick second. Resetting. Next side in three. In two, lift up. Good. Doesn't need to be a huge twist, folks. Moderate size twist. And feeling those rotators in the core. Feel the rotation turn. Feel the rotation return. Good breathing. Last few. Yeah, we'll go three. Two, and one. Woo, okay, we're getting mobilized. Mm -hmm. Let's grab our weights. Let's go down to the floor. We got two, 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 so you got one minute for me here. Start with those renegade rows in three, in two, let's go. It's our second time around, you know what you're doing. Step into it, and take that tempo up a little bit. Get those squats in. And then quickly step it back down, feet wide, smooth renegade rows. Thirty seconds, halfway. Hopefully your tempo is getting pushed a little bit. There we go. Twenty seconds left. Keep pushing tempo. I'm giving you a break to follow from here. How can we finish this last 10? Bingo. Intensity's driving. That finish line comes up quickly. Go finish up in three, in two, and rest, recover. Put the weights properly back down to the floor. Take a well-earned breather. You are now officially mobilized. It's time for us to get into the meat and broccolini for the day. <laughs> Not a bad broccolini jokes. That was just <laughs> improv here. Uh, we got our supersets coming up next. Supersets, we'll go back to an old favorite, our Bulgarian split squat, which means that we're going to want something behind us that's an elevated surface. If not, a, a split lunge stance can do fine, and I'll, I'll show you guys that on my end. But remember, we start out with the heavy stuff, then we dial it down. We start making a little bit lighter, and then we're going to finish up with some body weight pulsing as our 20-second finish to each of these. We'll go through one round on one side, one round on one side, and then we'll switch to the second one. Hopefully that is clear. Get your heavy weight habit close by. Uh, let's show the movements real quick. Yeah. Okay, Bulgarian split squat. Let's do a quick reminder for everybody. Jackson's got that foot on an elevated surface behind him. His stance is not way out, right? It's a little bit more condensed. He's going to drop straight down and push up through that forward heel. He's still going to identify that forward heel, 
But with this movement, we're allowing this knee to go over the toes in his stance. So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two comes onto our back. We're gonna have a hollow hold position. We're gonna have a weight overhead. Now you can choose where that weight is. So if you're here, a little bit easier, and you can start to bring that weight further back to make your movement more challenging. Of course, I want your stuff to be challenging. So wherever you feel like you can get to, I encourage you to push. Those are our two movements. Once again, we'll go heavy and work our way down as time goes down as well. So let's stand up. We're gonna get our Bulgarian split squat on our right leg first, right side first for that Bulgarian split squat. It's Bulgarians, man, they're just incredible <laughs> exercise-minded folk. <laughs> All right, heavy weight, three, two, lower down on that right leg, push up through that right heel. Now, Jackson and I are showing various options for how you can hold that weight. I've got the weight up in front. Jackson's got those weights on either side of his leg. Both are good. Anything works here. Jackson allows his upper body to do a little folding, right? He's hinging coming down. He's not straight up. We've got 20 seconds on this right leg. He's also thinking right knee pulling lightly out to the right side. Just a little bit, about one inch of that pull out to the right side. And he's knocking out those last few before we're gonna change our weights. Finished in three, in two, in one. Let's put the weights down properly, bend your knees, keep your back straight. Okay, switch out to the moderate weights, two moderate weights next. Same right leg. Beginning in three, in two, lower back down, press back up. Good, now you wanna get kinda of close to the floor, depending on what you feel like you're capable of doing. You could kinda of stay higher up, but we don't wanna tap the knee to the floor. We wanna be gentle to that knee. So if you can always keep it just high enough where you're not getting that tap to the floor, I just think of that as making it slightly happier knee. So finished with these in three, in two, in one. Those weights go down in its body weight for a pulse for our finish on that right leg. So same split stance. We're going to come down to the bottom this time in small up and down pulses. We're going to start in three, in two, in one. Good. Keep that little hinge forward, right? That forward leg, that quad should start screaming to you. Yell right back at it. Breathe out as you push up, little breath out, little breath out, and we go to that finish line in three, in two, in one. Nicely done. Now, let's grab that heavy weight again. We go onto our back on the floor. That heavy weight, it can start right up here. We're gonna do a straight leg scissor kick. Three, two, and one. So the weight can be straight up, or it can start falling further overhead and that's really where we're gonna increase our challenge. Low back pushing down, nice big kicks. Now, if you start to burn out, bring that weight back up. Maybe keep those feet a little higher. Less of a giant kick and having that weight up, good options for keeping you going into here. 10 more seconds. Low back push, drive it down, work extra core into your motion. We go finished up in three, in two, in one. We're going to change weight out, go lighter in your second round, and we go shorter in our second round here too. Same positioning, five seconds, three, two, let's get moving. Weight overhead, reaching overhead. Big kicks. Quick breathing, strong pushing. Got ourselves about 10 good seconds here. All right, finished with these in three, in two, in one. We go body weight last, put the weight aside. Our body weight, we're gonna keep those hands overhead and we're gonna shorten up that kick. We're gonna make it a very small kick. Okay, we're gonna get started in three, 
in two, in one. Now you can keep the head flat to the floor. You can lift the head a little bit and tuck that chin. Whatever feels good to you is cool. 10 seconds left. Quick breathing, finish line approaches in three, in two, and rest, recover. Woo! Game on, sucker. Oh boy. Game on, sucker. <laughs> now that left leg. It's time to show up. Yeah. Time to show up, left leg. I'm gonna get a quick sip of water, take that small breather, give you that opportunity of little energy recovery. How we doing? Well, I'm supposed to use two weights for this, so... You did it in the first round, you might as well do it again in the second <laughs> round. Whew. And do remember, I, you know, I've been trying to drive this home in the videos consistently. Uh, pick things up properly, right? Bend your knees, pick something up like so, very squat-like. Try not to just like fold forward and round your back and then just wildly bring the top half up. I really hope you're not calling me out. I don't know what I did. I'm yet. not calling you out. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> If anything, you're calling me out. Okay. I think I do it more than you do. Okay. <laughs> not calling you out. You're cur you're I just didn't know what I did. It. You're doing great back there, man. You just keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Okay, that's enough of us going. We're going to the left leg. Set yourself up. We're going to start in three, in two. Remember, this is heavy weights. Switch them out quickly if you don't got that in. We start with our heavy set, and our heavy set is our long set. We're fine-tuning the movement in the beginning. Your left knee should be barely out to the left side. It has a small pull out to that left side. Your abs are tight. They are helping you balance here. Not only that, when you squeeze the abs, you're gonna to start to feel that heart rate go up faster. You're requiring more of your body to work hard. And we got about 10 seconds. That knee is not tapping, but it's getting close. And we go finished up on the left with the heavies in three, in two, in one. Proper switch of those weights, please. I can see you all out there. I know what's going on. Proper lift. Jackson went for two weights again. He took the bait. <laughs> three, two, and a one. Second side, medium weights, moderate weights. You got it. He's still making sure that heel's working in front. That's what that knee is where it needs to be. Yeah, and now he's pushing tempo. All right, Jackson came in here ready to fire today. He might have been surfing big waves, but that doesn't stop Jackson. Last few, ladies and gentlemen, let's go three, two, and one. Put those weights down properly, and then last up, we go body weight. Get that pulse at the bottom, and it's 20 seconds of that pulse. All right, let's get set up. We get started in three, in two. It is pulse time, small ups and downs. Quick breath out with the up. Right, quick breath out, quick breath out, quick breath out. 10 seconds left. Get that burn, challenge the stability and strength up in front. Let's go finished up in three, in two, in one. Let's bring it down to the floor. We got that heavy weight, we're gonna have it overhead. We're gonna do some straight leg kicking. All right, folks, beginning in three, in two, in one. Figure out where that weight can hang out the best. It could be up top, it could be halfway back, it could be really far extended overhead. Thirty seconds. Push that low back down. Twenty seconds. Mm. Time just flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Break out the snacks, Sean. I, you know what? If I had some broccolini right now, I certainly would. <laughs> A little sugar coated broccolini. Three, two, and rest. Change the weight out. Moderate weight next. Medium weight, moderate weight. You got any? Did you bring any snacks? Oh man, I gotta bring my goji berries next time. Oh, we've got a bunch of those. Oh good. All right, starting in three, in two, in one. 
We still have the same bag from when Sarah and I shot that goji berry video like seven months ago. And if you remember that conversation, goji berries are super antioxidant packed, right? So I just get myself a little handful of them almost every day. I figure that's an extra little micronutrient burst into things. Speaking of burst, how's everybody doing? Let's go three, two, rest it. Last up is the body pulse without weight. Still gonna have those arms overhead. Tiny flutter kick up above, tiny flutter kick up above. Let's get started in three, in two. Let's rock it out, little, little kick. Eyes looking up. Ten seconds. Nicely done. Three, two, and rest and recover, my man. Woo! All right, ladies and gents, we're getting there. We're making a day of it. We only got some cardio for the finish. That's right. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> I gotta make more catchy slogans like that. <laughs> All right, so folks, uh, this is when the pillow time comes in. And if you like to put a pillow underneath your knees, if that's like a good thing for you, then maybe two pillows is, is what you're gonna need through here. We're gonna do an old classic. We're gonna do some pillow slams. And uh, this holiday season, Sarah's family got us another throw pillow. So we figured, why not? Uh, show off what we got, you know, show the latest and greatest, and do what a throw pillow is meant to do, yeah, is throw that thing into the floor, do. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, our basic pillow slam in front right here. From our kneeling position, arms go overhead, we throw it down, and then we lift back up. When we throw it down, you're sitting back with the hips, and that should help you get a more powerful throw going down. After that, we're going to stand up. We're going to bring our hands up behind our head. We're going to do our crunch at the top of doing a squat. So we do our bicycle crunch at the top, plant the feet, squat again, and go to the second side. Okay. First few, I want you to just kind of work out the kinks, go a little slow, and then I'll coach you up to go in a little faster as we get into it. 40 seconds apiece for these. Do each of them two times. Ladies and gentlemen, grab your throw pillows. Let's get ready to roll through here. We'll get started in 10. All right, so throw pillow just down in front is where we get it going. We start ourselves out in three, in two, let it rip. Think about breathing out as you throw it down. Get those lats, Woo! get those muscles right on the armpits to give you a strong throw downward. And if you can make that pillow jump even better, I know sometimes in past videos we've got some really good pop off some of those. This thing has proven itself to be quite a popper. Yeah, yeah, that one's a doozy for you. She really gave us something to work with. Her. Let's go. <laughs> Last few, and then we're standing in three, in two, in one. Go ahead and stand on up with us. Okay, next up, feet are shoulder width apart, hands are behind the head. We've got one full squat, and at the top, one bicycle crunch. We switch to the second side, second time around. Three, two, squat, crunch. Second side. Okay, we're not going fast yet. Stabilizing, getting to where good depth in that squat works for you, figuring that out. And now we can start to tick it up a notch, going a little faster. Fine tune what we're doing. With every crunch, we get a breath out. Opposite elbow, opposite knee, quick breath out. Now, just a little extra for those final 10 seconds. Excellent, we got good pace, we got good push. We're gonna go back to throw pillows in three, in two, in one. That's good, let's bring it back down to the floor, kneeling position. Let's see what we can get out of this, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, your time has come. Three, two, rock it out. Strong breath out, strong throw down. 
As you throw it down, tighten your belly. Use those lats. Yeah. If you got a pillow that bounces all over the place and makes you go grab it, even better. Kind of like a hot potato scenario. 15 seconds, then we're standing. Getting right towards the end of the workout here today, folks. Finished here in three, in two, in one. Move those throw pillows back to where people can't sit on them. Go back to doing a squat and a crunch. I'm gonna get you started. Beginning in three, in two, knock it out. Now we know what we're doing movement wise. So if you can push tempo, I'm gonna encourage it. Okay, less than 30, give me a tiny bit faster. Challenge it. Good, tempo, pace, pushing. 20 seconds. One more time, little bit faster. This is the fastest you're going. You got last 10 seconds. There we go, good. Quick breathing, strong heels. Finished up in three, in two, in one. Woo! Woo! I see done, folks. That's right, Jackson's alluding to it. Grab your weights, put them underneath those shoulders. Two, two, twos for one more minute. We couldn't let you go just yet. Two, one. Let's make it smooth with those rows. Make it strong with those deadlifts. Good squats. Back down to that floor. Now we should be pushing tempo again, right? This is the end. Don't hold back on me unless you kind of need a little breather time here. Thirty seconds. Push tempo, last 30, last 30. Where can you get yourself to in that final 30 seconds? All the way up from those deadlifts, bellies tight with all four of your movements. Tighten that core, squeeze that belly. Last 10 seconds. Straight back, three, two, and ding, 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 ding. It's dinner time. <laughs> oh, give me a minute. Good job, everybody. Take Ooh. a breather. Woo, we can put that one officially in the books. Woo, give yourself an opportunity to rest. Grab your towel because we're gonna be stretching on our back as our starter. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? And talk about something very cool today. Something very near and dear to my heart. I think Jackson would probably say similar. And talk about smiling. That's right. We're gonna talk about showing those pearly whites, getting those lips to fold upward. And while we're talking about smiling, don't you dare even think about doing it out there. Right? You keep that frown going strong, please. We're gonna bring one leg straight up. We're going to stretch that leg out using the towel as a little helper on the bottom of that foot. All right, shoulders start relaxing a little bit. Let's start talking about the science of smiling. First up, fact number one. Smiling, it was, in, it was invented 1752. That's right. It's a well-known fact. <laughs> Everybody knows Smile was invented in 1752. That's totally not true, uh, bad joke. But in the 1800s, what did happen is a guy named Charles Darwin was kind of the first of many scientists around that time that started to explore the facial feedback hypothesis. What does that sound like? It sounds like uh, when somebody's smiling, you got no choice but to smile. Yeah, to some degree, right? We're gonna talk a little, a little bit about that. Uh, the early studies that were done on this were done using a pencil and putting it into somebody's teeth. So they like forced this kind of awkward smile and then they would record what feelings were. But even with that, they were seeing a pretty strong correlation to like improved feelings and better mood and other people smiling more so too. 
All right, the science behind it. Uh, you're in a pleasant situation. If you haven't moved that leg a few times side to side, do so. And then we'll switch over to that second leg next year. So science behind it, you're in a pleasant situation. You see an old friend, you're, you're kind of immediately brought into a point where your brain is happy, right? And when your brain is happy, endorphins are produced by the brain and neuron, neuron signals are transmitted to the facial muscles and a trigger for a smile happens. Switch that leg if you haven't done it already. So this is the start of the positive feedback loop and happiness, which is our smiling muscles contract. They in return send back a signal to the brain that stimulates our reward system and further increases our level of happiness via hormones or endorphins. Um, so this works in both manners where basically in short, when the brain feels happy, we smile and vice versa. When we smile, our brain feels happier. The positive feedback loop can be a powerful thing. We're going to learn here. Um, faking it. You know how you say, you know, you're not feeling stoked. Move that leg around a little bit. If you haven't done that already, that if you're, you're not feeling great, just put the smile on your face anyways, and you'll start to feel better. Yeah, that's a true thing. We just talked about that feedback loop. So if you smile, your brain automatically feels a little bit happier. You have uh, more of the emotional pathways that open up just with the physical change of, of what we're doing with the smiling. Smiling is contagious. So even if you wanted to be a Debbie Downer and frown and you didn't feel like smiling, no big deal, just by simply being around people that are smiling can get you to smile a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna turn around. We're gonna have our belly onto the floor. We're gonna hug in a leg and try to stretch out our quads. You can use either the towel for that or you just grab the foot behind you potentially as well. And once again, goal is to get the front of the leg to stretch. So whatever knee is bent, we wanna squeeze our butt on that side. And you probably wanna struggle with it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys struggle with this one? I've told you a few times in past videos that uh, we could just go back to doing the split stance of this one kinda of works a little bit too much for you if it's not working for you is what I should say through there. Okay, squeeze, breathe, smile. So they found that just by being around somebody who's smiling, you're more likely to increase your likelihood for smiling as well as positive feelings. Let's do a little switch with that foot through there. Um, and it's the same thing where like, even simply seeing somebody smiling is getting your neural pathways, a lot of those signals to reciprocate and trigger a smile within yourself. Now there is a little bit, bit of debate on this where there was some more recent studies done where they were looking at like a group of a hundred people and they said on average, if somebody who was smiling just came up to somebody who wasn't smiling in a group of 100, about seven people would smile. And okay, so that's good. At least we're looking at some variations. However, you know, if somebody just randomly came up to me smiling and I didn't know who they were or what the situation was, I might not be inclined to smile at them right off the bat is at least what I was thinking through there. All right, let's come on up from here. Let's do a little bit of seated upper body stretches. Get into a good, comfortable seat. I think Jackson's gonna grab a little bolster to sit on. And we're gonna do that one arm overhead, slowly to one side, and then switching to our second side. So just kinda light side to sides with the overhead reaching from here. All right, health benefits. Uh, as you may have guessed, it reduces anxiety when you smile. It also lowers your blood pressure, lowers your heart rate. So. Uh, pretty significant health benefits, but here's really where the science digs deep, everybody. We're gonna deep dive this one. Come back up, bring one arm across the front, stretch out your shoulder behind you. There has been some scientific study that uh, tends to estimate equivalent levels of happiness, and they have uh, some interesting ways of doing this. Let's go ahead and switch to the second arm through here. And one thing that these people in these studies determined was that the happiness level of a smile can have the estimated equivalents of 2,000 chocolate bars, 2,000 chocolate bars, or getting 16,000 euro. Something tells me this study was done out in Europe. This is the most arbitrary, these are the most arbitrary enumerations I've ever heard. It, it's pretty... Pretty broad, but let's bring the hands behind you, reach back, 
But you heard it here first, everybody. Let's bring the chin up. Let's pull the shoulders back. Let's breathe. Let's stretch. So, uh, I mean, if you guys get 16,000 euro ever handed to you or 2,000 chocolate bars, you'll know what it's like to smile. <laughs> <laughs> that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard you say, man. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna back that one completely. We just thought it'd be something to laugh about. Um, smiling, smiling's a rad thing. I mean, it, it literally is totally contagious and it shows other people that you're stoked on life. I feel like that's a, a great thing to be like passing along. In fact, a company that my brother worked for for a long time, his first job out of college was Sanook and their whole thing was smile, pass it on. It, it is like the coolest saying I think a company has ever had. Smile, pass it on for sure. Jackson, what do you got? Well, I just want to give you guys a little fun fact about Sean is he smiles with both of his lips and therefore he has the biggest smile of anybody that I know. Wow. Yeah. You got to use both the lips, right? <laughs> Don't just sandbag. He bears use a both lip. teeth. It's unbelievable. You want to show those pearly lights. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, we'll call it at that. We'll give you all an opportunity to enjoy the rest of your day or evening and get some broccolini in your systems.